the graphic card is really hot so this is why I actually would like to run it without graphic card as these M2 slots are here in this audio board M2 riser thing I will probably also steal an M2 SSD from another test server and install it while we have the case open removing the power supply just to make it a little bit easier to get it in and out and then we can later see how well it fits in there so I actually need to check the M2 SSD so here under this heatsink shield thing are supposed to be two M2 slots for SSDs and such so let's see to put that in there while we are at it so this looks to be just some heatsink I wonder where exactly the second is though hmm. and the nice thing of course is you can service here everything yourself in contrast to other window logins I will probably peel off this uh, later when everything is tested and works to avoid issues in case I need to send something back for warranty things So next the board goes in here we need some screws that I collected here we'll see what exactly we use maybe these black ones if they fit how many screws do we have there one two three four yeah looks like this black screws fit maybe they were from this case hmm. but getting the screws consistently in is really a pain I don't like this I never had so much problems with uh, heatsink this is really annoying to get all screws in that all screws are really having grip this is really always a millimeter angled and then they don't get in there somehow as I said I never had such a drama with the heatsink so now all the screws are in so probably better not do it on this cardboard do it on a solid surface and now this goes in there it looks like we are lucky enough that this heatsink and fan fits in there Then these few screws go in here to hold the board just like this. Obviously the bigger your case the easier it is. Also easier with this hard drive cage removed but whatever. So which maybe we want to do now anyway otherwise without the hard drive cage removed it's slightly difficult to get the LEDs and such in as I mentioned in another video I usually do not connect the reset pin and what was it? HDD LED so after the LEDs the chassis fan that I once even forgot <coughs> and my hard drives became too hot so if your hard drive is dying you may have forgotten the fan and oh, power supply 12 volt was this obviously quite tight here the best place for a power plug here at the corner but it's a downside of the ITX each millimeter needs to be used so and power was here one last test before we screw in the power supply need also need to have VGA again If we destroyed something by touching everything back and forth as well as the system fan. I wonder if the post always takes that long here. It looks like it takes quite some time for the graphics to come up. So now that works. Then while we are at it, this was HDD LED. That was okay, but first the power LED was reset we don't wire. Then we have the power supply somewhere here 
So due to this cable mess we probably maybe we have to plug out this power fence. This comes from first plugging it in for testing. And then having to get your power supply through there. This should be relatively nice. Let's see how the temperature goes then. So this fits relatively nicely with over a centimeter of clearance. So let's sort the cables nicely and put back the storage module. Storage power. Maybe ideally I want this go below this big cable there, so off again. So this is quite nice out of the way now, more or less, something like this. Storage. This should be enough on that one, two, three. Or was this too short? Maybe this, or this was putting too much pressure to the PCB here, maybe. So on those, we do not really need. Then we can do one of the more final test boots. So this post really takes so long, that is a little bit unfortunate. And so at least the uh, M2 Samsung SSD EFO here was recognized because in some Amazon reviews people wrote SSDs wouldn't work in the M2 slot, so always wondering what those users are doing. So let's plug in the 380 cables and finally fully boot it. Yeah, you guessed it, getting slightly full with all the cables, but that is the point of a compact server node. Obviously this nice hot plug backplanes of servers are much nicer, but they are also more expensive. Yeah, so that should be that. I hope I can later run it without graphic card. We will see this tomorrow or so. And uh, yeah, let's finally put it up, install and get going with all the computing power. So, and we have this previously test installed hard drive test setup booted. I still need to research some details the next days, maybe even patch grub too, because I had a problem with this SSD cache thing that I set up here or want to set up because once I tested this grub wouldn't boot from this, so maybe I have to patch grub to ignore this cached partitions on this non-root volume. But these are all the small details that you need to take care of. So I hope you enjoyed this mini ITX build. Of course it looks slightly nicer with this black cover on top. Yeah, stay tuned for more testing and reports on this and I hope you enjoyed this mini IT export with AMD Horizon. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe and I hope to see you soon for the next videos to come. Somehow it takes a little bit for Link to come up though. Hmm, oh there's Link. Yeah, that is a slightly older kernel, so let's emerge the latest kernel first. Here again, full kernel build, 11 minutes or so, but this is not the very latest kernel. So this was building on slightly older 4.15 from March. It is likely that the latest kernel had some more optimizations for AMD Ryzen and such, or it's simply getting warmer in this case though.